Leadership is not just telling people what to do. All of you who are listening to me, leadership is not just telling them, hey man, go do that. Hey, young lady, go do that. That's part of, that's directing. Leadership is developing your people. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to the Evolution Podcast. And with us today are, as usual, Ethan P. Heisey. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. And Mr. Johnson. Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing super fantastic as always. We're looking to have a great, another great program. So let's get to it. Awesome. And I am Sagi Schreiber. Um, so Ethan and I are mentees of Mr. J. And as always, we discuss things that come up for us in our business. So the thing that we wanted to talk to you about today is basically something that came up in, in Ethan and I's businesses uh, right now, which is the, the amount, like basically scaling and doing things right, um, which I'm finding right now that I brought in a CEO and the head of UX, like people that are actually like replacing kind of like my roles in customer acquisition and talent acquisition and managing like my talents in the studio. Um, and that's, that's the level where I'm at. And now um, the people that are actually supposed to do, you know, I'm supposed to delegate the things that I'm supposed to do, obviously are, you know, are in a period where they are all already overwhelmed with uh, assignments and tasks and I'm still doing everything with them. So it's kind of like um, the overwhelm of leadership, I would guess, um, and scaling a business. It's something that we want to talk about. Well, this is what I would tell everyone. First of all, if you're wanting to grow your business, you're going to have to develop some sort of infrastructure. You know, if you got a CFO, COO, managerial team, board, whatever your structure is. And in talking to my guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, they're great businessmen, but as all men and women do, we have challenges as we attempt to grow our business and things of that nature. And this morning we were discussing Mr. J, you know, what do we do? You, you, you said delegate and follow up, but I find that I'm still doing everything. I find that I'm still doing so much, but I brung on new people. I brung on this. I brung on that. And yet I'm still just as busy. And just to be frank, I'm not going to say who said what, but I will say this. When, I, when, my, when my mentee said that, you're doing, I said, you're doing a lot of things wrong. The purpose of delegation and follow up is not to absolve you as the CEO of any responsibility whatsoever. The purpose of delegation and follow-up is to develop your people. You see, how I became extremely successful once I got into a leadership position was not just me barking orders at people. It was me developing them. And so the purpose of delegation and follow-up is not just to have some menial tasks completed. The purpose is, is for your employees or managers or whomever your team is, if you will, to be able to function if you're not there. Mm -hmm. So if you're not there, it would function. And not only function, but it would still perform. Now, my guy said to me, Mr. Jay, I'm still doing everything. Well, if that's the case, then we need to look at our time management skills. We need to look at what we're delegating and how we're delegating it out. The first thing I suggest to all of you when you want to delegate something out, the hardest part for most CEOs is as much as they like their employees, they don't trust them. And I get it because they're not you. But this is the deal. You're going to have to trust the people you're with. It's like teammates. You know, we're on, say me and you and uh, Ethan are all on the basketball team. All right. We have to trust each other. And that's what I, when I see a guy or a girl, you know, you guys know what I mean. See a young man or young woman saying, Mr. Jay, I'm delegating, but I'm still doing all of this other stuff. Then Something's not right. And it shouldn't be that you have nothing to do, but you should not be overwhelmed. If anything, it should enable you to have even more effective time management skills. So the purpose of delegation and follow-up is for your staff, your managerial team to be able to operate and not only operate, but operate at a very high level when you're not in the building. And uh, that is a work in progress. It's something you have to do, do on a consistent basis, but delegation and follow-up, delegate a task out, follow back up with it whatever time you feel appropriate for that employee. But however, you cannot scale your business if you don't scale yourself or your infrastructure. It's just going to be a, a tremendous struggle. Got it. So I'm like, I'm looking at um, specifically today, even um, the, our head of UX, she came all the way from her um, home in Jerusalem to, to our area. And we met in the office and we had like a, a meeting, like it's kind of like the manager, the management team. And it was like, 
I let them run the team. Um, both of them are really amazing at what they do. And I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, I know they're both doing a lot of things that I used to do myself. Um, mm-hmm. And still, the question is like, okay, so following up on what you said, Mr. J, is like, how do I develop them, right, um, to do the things, you know, in a way that is fully on them if I'm not there? Okay, well, let's look at it this way. If I had a football team, and the reason I'm using teams, because teams in a lot of ways are like businesses. They are businesses. They are, but they just, they're in sports. So Mr. J, well, how do I do that? Well, they have the, the defense, they have the special team, they have the wide receivers coach, the quarterback coach, and all these different positions, right? Yeah. Well, the way you do it is that you as the leader and the owner and the GM, you feel me? I mean, you're doing all of it because this is your company. You have to have a skill set to where I'm putting this team around me. Stay with me, guys. Use your imagination here. You're putting this team around. So who's my quarterback? Who's my right guard? Who's my defensive end? In other words, who do I have around me? And then based on who you have around you, you have to have enough uh, foresight to see that what employee is strong in certain areas. Like certain employees I know are very good mathematically, but struggle with people skills. Some people are very good with people skills, but they struggle mathematically. And so that's your job as that coach. You got to exemplify the talent of the draft pick you put on your team. So when you when you hire that COO, you drafted him to your team. You made a draft pick. And now he, I'm the coach, but I like this player. I'm going to draft him on my team. But when you draft him on your team, you should already have a plan on how you're going to use him mm-hmm. to get the team to get a championship. And so what you need to do to answer your questions, Geek, Respectfully, my friend, you know, I love you dearly. That is your responsibility as the CEO and say, okay, I have Terrence Johnson over here and he's very good at A, B, C, D, and E. These are the things he's doing well at. These are his areas of opportunities. Hey, Terrence, you're doing great here, but we want to see some improvement in this in this area. And that's what you have to do. Mm-hmm. What you have to learn to do to all of my CEOs, you have to move out of a just doing everything on your own mode to leading role. And a lot of people struggle with that. So again, I would take each individual, sit, I'm telling you what I done, what I what I continue to do. Let's just start there. Let's talk actionable steps, forget hypothetical. Mr. Johnson, you have employees, what do you do? Listen, I have a, I don't know, I got so many employees, whatever. Uh, the, I use one, of, okay, I just use a manager and uh, I'm wanting him or she, her to get better. What do I do? The first thing I'm gonna do is talk to them. You see, a lot of times communication can really elevate your business, effective communication. I'm gonna talk to my employee, my colleague, and I'm gonna say, you know, what do, do you have everything you need to be successful? Because again, as the owner, uh, Sagi and Ethan and, and those out there who are listening, it is your responsibility to make sure that your staff have the tools that are necessary to build out whatever it is you're trying to do. So again, it's not just telling somebody what to do and then following up with them to see if they got it done. As a leader, it is your job. Listen, I know, I, Jesus, so many people don't get this it is your job to develop your people, but most people try to develop their business. Let me tell you, I want you to stay with me now. Most people try to develop their business without developing their people. Mm-hmm. You cannot develop the business without developing the people. Got it. I hope that makes sense to you. That makes sense. Because you're one of the yeah. best young mm-hmm. leaders I know. Now, and I want everyone to listen to me. Even the best of us need help, need coaching. What do I do? How do I resolve this? What do we do? And I'm telling you the secret to this, guys. It's not just scaling your business. It's scaling your staff. In other words, do they have the tools, the work environment, the infrastructure, the managerial support, whatever your standard operating procedure is, your SOP, whatever it is, are the things in in that person's vicinity to build you a successful business because by building successful people the 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 result of that is a successful business that makes a lot of sense yeah so i really want you guys to focus on that i want you to focus on developing your people everyone's always trying to just to increase revenue and it was just obviously is the the creme de la creme but how can you guys aren't making the money 
Your employees do that. That's what you pay them for. Now, if you find yourself still as a worker bee, a drone, where I'm still just doing every damn thing, then you need to look at your managerial style. How do I manage? What's my number one priority? How often am I meeting with my executive team? How often, how often am I setting these goals for us? I tell you again, you should be meeting with your team at least once a week. That you don't need to go, you know, have meetings three or four times a week. Once a week, delegation follow-up, managing by objective, MBO, manage by objective. This week I'm focusing on this. This week we're focusing on that. This week, and that all comes from you as the leader. For all of you who are listening out there in podcast land, that all comes from you. Then once you've established that and you have a parameter in which you're operating your business and you know what it is that you're wanting to do, now you're delegating those tasks and assignments out. Now it's incumbent upon you to follow back up with your staff and to see if you are achieving the results that you're looking for. And let me end on this note. And if you have not achieved that result that you plan to achieve, now the next step is what are we going to do about it? What's the actionable plan that we can implement to bring about the results that we're looking for? So as a CEO, CFO, COO, any leadership role, you should always be thinking on how can I improve my people? And by improving my people, I improve my performance. When I improve my performance, I improve my results. When I improve my results, my bank account is happy. I love that. <laughs> The way I like to think about that, Mr. Johnson, is uh, my my clients are no longer the people I'm dealing with because my employees are taking care of that for me. My clients are now my employees. And it's my job to make sure, like you said, they have everything that they need to be successful. Um, the training system's in place for them to learn more so we can scale. Because at the end of the day, I, you know, one plus one does not equal two. It should equal three. It should grow exponentially in a way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I, I try. I try now to think of it more as a chess game than checkers. I, I on on Saturday on the weekends, I look at my business. I think about. I work on my business rather than in my business, and I write down. Great. So this employee does this. This can I maybe shuffle job tasks around, or what else can I think to give them to equip them um, mm-hmm. to become more successful in their role, which should enhance everything, the entirety of the business. So I love it. It's great. Well. Uh, I think you're doing super fantastic. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to dog all your business. I know what you're doing and how you, you know, how you make the living and all that, which is super fantastic. But I will say this to the guys who are listening. Ethan and I did speak yesterday and, you know, we obviously have mm-hmm. a very great relationship. But in talking to him, I'm, uh, they said, well, Mr. J, there are your mentees. You know, what do you do? I make them better, but I make them better by holding them accountable and making them think differently. And the one thing I said to him, and I say this to all of you, as an entrepreneur, there is no one holding you accountable. No one. There's no board, no CEO, CEO, no one. You're 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 operating on your own. Uh, I hope you guys are probably hearing the my landscapers here doing my lawn. I didn't know you. Not hearing anything, anything, by the way. You don't hear anything. No, it's good. Okay, great. Okay, I hope you don't. But anyway, what I, what I do is just hold these guys accountable to themselves. And as entrepreneurs, now here's the downside. And most people want to be honest. You know, I always tell you guys, everybody's selling you the fluff. Everything's going to be great. No challenges, no adversity. But it's just a bunch of BS. At challenges come to make you stronger. But at the end of the day, you have to make your mind up about what type of leadership style you're going to have with your team and the results that you're looking for. And when I was speaking to Ethan yesterday, I said to him, as entrepreneurs, no one, no one's going to hold you accountable. You're going to hold yourself accountable. And it is human nature, human nature to take the path of least resistance. So you're not necessarily going to hold yourself to a high standard. That's why you got to have that mindset, if you will. My mind is set. No one's going to hold Mr. Johnson accountable. Mr. Johnson's going to hold himself accountable. And I need all of you guys to truly understand that. And in talking with Ethan yesterday and him, you know, growing his business, which I'm very proud of him. He he was up over last year, which I was super excited about. Now, keeping that in mind, with all the challenges, COVID, uh, the inflation, the, the, the economics, and this guy is still up. So that's just a phenomenal job. But this would I, I'm not trying to pop his bubble. But I said to him, he, he's on our call with us. I said, listen. What's the percentage of that that you're up from the previous year? And he, and he told me what he was slowing down. I said, are you happy with that? And he said, no. Then he didn't do as well as you wanted. You mm-hmm. see, the only, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Guys need honesty. Not to be coddled or given a bunch of BS. You don't need that. You need to be told the truth. What do you need to do and how do I do it? 
And then you need to be consistent about it. And then you need to hold your ass accountable to do it. <laughs> it's really just that simple. But anyway. And I, I love that statement you made. You said, you know, the, the percentage you're up is just equivalent to the percentage of knowledge of your growth. That's correct. And it, yeah. it completes. Um, if you're not oh. growing, your business is growing because you're the leader of that the organization. That's it. That's it. It's you. I drive my ship. I drive my ship. I drive my ship. I drive my ship. And I choose who I put in the ship with me. I choose who I put in that ship with me. And I also choose who we got to get out. You need to take this leadership mind. Leadership is not just telling people what to do. All of you who are listening to me, leadership is not just telling them, hey, man, go do that. Hey, young lady, go do that. That's part of that's directing. Leadership is developing your people. Most people don't have a succession plan. This is another grave mistake. If something happened to one of you and you don't have someone that knows the ins and outs of your business, the odds are your business will fail. And all of your efforts and work that you put into that business will die with you. You need a succession plan. I tell these guys this all the time. And you need to start developing great people skills. The greatest CEOs that I've seen are not the guys who are the greatest guys at finances. That's why you have a CFO or, you know, human resources and all that crap. The greatest CEOs I've seen have great, phenomenal ability to communicate and have people rally around them. And so, again, I say to you, to all of you who are listening, it's you. It's your company. You hired them. You chose them. You started the business. So everything is flowing from you. And if it's not going the way that you want it to go, then you need to just take the mirror and hold it right in your face. What am I doing? What do what did you just say, Ethan? I told Ethan this yesterday. You cannot scale your business without scaling yourself. You cannot grow your business and you're not growing. It's, it's an oxymoron. It's not going to happen. You know, but everybody's looking for other people to do it. You know, and get me some more revenue and get all this stuff in. And I'll reap the benefits of that. But without really putting the effort in, if you hired some people, go hard for six months, man. Ladies and gentlemen, go hard. Damn it. I had to go hard when I was young. When I was a young man, I had to go hard. 70 hours a week was nothing. 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 I would be so fucking tired. I would come home and sit in the floor in my living room. My wife would tell you this. I would rub my husband. She would rub her husband's shoulders. And in five minutes, he was completely out. And you know what he did? The very next day, he got up and he did it again. And you know why? Because I wanted to win. And if you want to win, you got to bring that winning attitude to your people. Not just looking good in your suit and tie and your Mercedes Benz and smelling good. But are you bringing that winning attitude to your team? Are you bringing that energy? Are you bringing that level of success? Are you bringing that level of intensity? Or are you just going through the motions and then wondering why I am not achieving the results that I want? Why is Mr. Johnson getting so passionate about that? Because I've been there and I know what it's going to take. And you people sitting there thinking all day, it's not going to change and get out of thinking and get to doing and start leading your team. Now you say, Mr. J, I don't know how to do that. Well, that's what I'm here for. Delegation, follow up. Spend an hour a week with each of those members. Where are you at personally? How do you feel about the direction of the company? What are the areas of opportunity? What do you think we could do better? Look for feedback from them as well. Build that team. Remember, you're the CEO, the coach, the GM. You're the fan. You're all of it. You own the stadium. Everything is you. A fish thinks from the head down. Never forget that, ladies and gentlemen. Forget my exuberance. Okay. Can you repeat that? What just what, just what he said? Because I'm actually taking notes. Like the last thing, when you sit one hour, um, you know, one hour a week, sit, sit one, one hour a week with your employees yep. and ask them, "How are you doing? How do you feel about the direction of the company? What are things you think we could do better?" You see, you want to get that feedback now. And here's what I tell guys: a lot of times we're looking for feedback. Most guys get want to be told what they want to hear. That's not the effect of communication. You want to be told the truth. What could we do better? So spend an hour a week with one of, with one of your plan. You don't have you can do it. Spend an hour a month with that employee. You know, you're meeting, you're having your regular meetings once a week, if you will. But I'm going to I'm going to take Ethan out for lunch today. 
We're going to go grab a burger and some fries and a couple of uh, pops. And we're going to talk about our business. And Ethan's in charge of sales and marketing. And I know he's tracking well, but I just want to get inside of his head and say, because you ever hear employees say this, man, if I owned this company, I wouldn't do it this way. Have you ever heard somebody, <laughs> you ever hear somebody say that? Man, if I owned this company, I'd do it this yep. way. Right. So then listen, they're never going to say that to you because you are the owner of the company. But if you ask them, hey, what do you think? And then listen and really give them an opportunity to express their views and opinion. And you know what? You might have a million dollar idea in that conversation. But see, a lot of guys don't want to do that. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. Listen, even you know this, Mr. Johnson, we're having dinner in two nights. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Ethan would agree. It's going to go super fantastic because I know how Mr. Johnson is. Everybody's going to want to talk to him. Would you agree with that, Ethan? That's right. Yeah. 100%. Mr. Johnson makes people feel good. Mr. Johnson has great people skills because everyone's looking for something. And you know what? Even your employees. What would it take? I've never made a bunch of money. My staff has. I'm going to say that to you again. I've never made a bunch of money. My staff did. I reap the benefits of the team that I've placed around me. That's what I did. I knew I'm not, I didn't know everything. I'm not a, you know, I don't know everything. What I do know, I do know, but I needed help. And the way you do is put the right people around you. Mm -hmm. And when those, when you put those people around you guys and you have the infrastructure in place and they got a great attitude and you're bringing that intensity, that intensity as the, most people that I see are not ready. They're too soft. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. It takes balls, man. You got to have some guts to be in this position. And I'm telling you, you got to bring that level of intensity and energy to success. The reason I win is because, not just because I'm intense, but intensity is a huge part of it. So, you know, I hope that helped you too, Sagi. Spend an hour, for all of you who are listening, spend an hour. It only have to be an hour, but I, I like taking them out for lunch, having a burger. I got one young lady who's a vegan, you know, Mr. J, let's go get a, a vegan burger. Okay. Uh, or I'll try it. Never had a black bean burger, but okay. You know, and didn't really kind of get in their head. Yeah. And you know what? If you really remove your ego and really listen, you'll find some pretty good ideas. Mm. Because I don't believe any of us would intentionally hire anyone dumb. Right. No. So then if we believe in them enough to pay them, we should believe in enough in them enough to listen mm -hmm. and really see what they have to say. And even if we don't understand it, hey, you got, look at you, I'm gonna use myself with you guys. Ladies and gentlemen out there who are listening to this podcast, check this out. My two guys were always say, Mr. Johnson, you need to do a podcast, we do this, we do that. Uh, Sagi would say, Mr. J, I'm gonna send you over this link and do that. I didn't know nothing about that crap. But because my guys were patient with Mr. Johnson, to you, it is second nature. But to Mr. Johnson, there's a 30-year difference. But you guys didn't throw me away and throw me under the bus. We work with Mr. Johnson. And that's what I say to you. See, here's another thing about human nature. We do what we want to do. Hmm. We do what we want to do. So if you really want your staff to get better, it will get better. We wanted an investor. Now we have one. We wanted people to fly in and have meetings with Mr. Johnson. Now it's happening. Don't you see? You have what you say. Hmm. It's up to you. And a lot of times we're looking for an outside fix. No, the, the conversation is always inwardly. I said this to Ethan yesterday when he told me about his financials and where he was. And I said, okay, great. This is not a conversation I'm saying to you to express to the world, but this is an inner conversation. This is what you are. This is who you are. This is who I am. And this is what I'm going to achieve. You know, and stop setting low goals with your staff. You got to challenge your people. People want to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. They do. They want to be a part of something successful. But yeah. most people have very low standards and very low expectations of their staff. You, your staff will rise to the level of standard that you set for them. I know this to be true. If you say you want to do a million dollars in revenue and you hire a couple of people, if you give them the tools and create the energy environment, it necessarily won't happen overnight. But in time, you'll achieve that goal. So. Uh, I think 
you know, that definitely gives me tons of things to think about. Yes, everybody out there as well. Ethan? Well, listen, I want you to, I, I want to listen, guys, I have a very busy schedule and I thank God for my life, but I'm just really into being high impact, high impact. The older I get, the less time that I have. I'm going to say this to, and this goes for all of us. The older you get, the less time you have. But see, again, most people aren't thinking like that. But the fact is, the older I get, the less time I have. So I don't have time just to tell my guys or anyone who might be listening a bunch of bullshit. I want you to achieve impactful results. And the first thing you've got to do is hold yourself accountable. It is your business. It is your dream. It is your vision. You hired those people. Now, are they performing at the level that I expect of them? And if not, what can I do to help them achieve the goals that I'm looking for? Again, leadership is not just telling people what to do. It's really developing your people to where they can lead themselves. That's why you never see me working hard anymore, because I have a team around me that gets it done. Does that mean I don't talk to them and follow up with them? Hell no. I want my money. Yeah. What kind of crap is that? Of course not. But am I micromanaging them every damn day? What are you doing? Where are you at? What's No. You got to create a balance. And see, most guys are going to have that conversation or even going to say this on the, uh, on the pod. I don't give a shit. I'm going to tell the truth because I'm free and I'm not dependent upon the system to take care of me. And so when I come from under the system, Mr. Johnson can really express who he is, how he feels, and this is what you should do. So the whole purpose of you delegating and follow up and bringing on these employees is not just to scale your business and make more money, but it's also to scale those people to give them opportunities to, in, to, for their endeavors or whatever. And hopefully... All things being equal, you guys will grow together and you'll achieve great success. But to micromanage people is, is redundant and to be loose with your man managerial skills is dangerous. So <laughs> I, 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 I love it. I, I love yeah, it. Great. Yeah, 100%. And um, I'm, I'm going hard right now. Um, I'm definitely looking into growing while I'm doing it. And uh, I think, you know, this gives me a lot of, a lot of, uh, hey man, stay hard, hard, man. Stay hard and stay motivated. Stay hard and stay motivated. Mm -hmm. Stay hard, stay motivated, stay inspired. Mr. Johnson encourages himself. Let me, man. What, what, what's going on with me right now? I'm sitting in my office. My back is hurting. My back is killing me right now. My knee is hurting. You know, I'm just being honest. My, I'm in a little pain this morning. I don't give a shit. I take some bad bill and go hard. Keep going hard. You know what separates the average person from greatness? That much. Hmm. That much. That much. That much. When you run track, a person will lose a race by a hundredth of a second. That's how close they were. But the ones who are great sprinters, it's they're the obvious choice. They're way out in front of the pack. You know why? Because they're going hard, baby. Yeah. They all in. Talent will only get you so far. But there's something to be said about ambition. There's something to be said about attitude. There's something to be said about intensity. There's something to be said about just, I'm just determined. Man, you put that ambition with that talent and the team. Woo! You can shake up the world, baby. You can do some damage from trying to tell. Look at you guys, how you smiling. I bet it's going to be people listening to this podcast saying, man, that man got me inspired. Wake up. Wake up. Wake the hell up, man. Wake up. And get out there. Stay hard, stay motivated, and get the damn job done, period. And if it's not happening the way you want, then hold yourself accountable because it's my business and I have to fix it. I don't coddle my mentees. I don't tell them crap they don't need to hear. I don't want to get them some unproductive bullshit that's wasting their time. The only thing that matters is the result. Get the job done and get it done right the first time, period, and then move on. What separates you from the pack? It's you. The difference between a Porsche and a, a Honda is the individual. Get your minds together, guys. Attitude determines altitude. I hope that helps. Boom. And that wraps up our episode for today. Guys, thank you so much. That was amazing. Uh, and I hope you guys got value from it. Guys, if you did... Please rate us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, wherever you're listening to the show. Let's take a snapshot right now. Share it with the people you love, with people that this can impact as well. Thank you so much, guys, and see you on the next episode of the Evolution Podcast.